Greetings, welcome back guys. It's probably been a while for anybody that watches this uh, channel or used to watch this channel. Uh, today I'm going to do something a little bit differently. Um, just wanted to talk about this. This is uh, probably my first official, I'd say, custom painted figure I've done. Uh, aside from small touch-ups and things on figures from the past, but full full paint and a little bit of custom work definitely the first figure i've done um so originally this started life out as a really old um 84 bootleg so this i've had this base since well before uh g store reissued the 84 mold pretty recently past couple of years i've probably had this for at least 10 years now and um i wish i would have taken a couple pictures of it before uh, my bad i guess but it was just some pure Chineseum, fully black, no paint on the eyes or anything, uh, really terrible paint on the toes and claws, and then just hardly any paint on the spines at all. Like somebody went along the outside of it with a white marker, basically. It just looked, it looked insanely bad. So I figured if I wanted to start trying to um, learn how to paint some things, do some customs, because I would like to be able to do some kits at some point, it always seemed fun. Uh, I need to start somewhere practice a little bit so figured I would give repainting this guy a shot with um, my airbrush and stuff. I'll go over what I actually used a little bit later. Um, I'd love for some feedback from you guys what I what I could do, what, what tools and things I should get, what types of paints and things I should use um, if you are more familiar with doing things like this because this is like I said my very first time. So obviously um, I repainted the whole thing base coat of just like some matte acrylic black and on top of that is a dry brushed mixture you probably won't be able to tell in the video but I'll take some pictures up close and hopefully you'll be able to see it but of uh, I made I made a mixture of really dark gray just with that same acrylic black and some matte white and dry brush that over the tops top layer, uh, just try to hit whatever of his skin texture was raised and leave the darker matte black in uh, in the creases. And I think that ended up working out pretty well. And um, the toes and the fingernails are just a blend of paints. That's really tricky. Was That was really tricky for me was trying to get the paint on the toenails and fingernails and have it come out smooth. Um, I'm assuming most of you guys that do customs probably don't use acrylics maybe enamel or something um that goes on smoother and shinier but it's, it's it seemed like as i was painting it on with a really fine paintbrush or trying to airbrush either with the airbrush i couldn't get good color consistency and also fading it to not just make it look like a regular bandai vinyl that just is a solid color with bleed on the toes or i was having the paint dry if i was brushing it on and losing and losing any of the smoothness and ended up having to like try to rub off the remnants of that but i did my best i don't know it's not it's not amazing but i'm not i'm not upset with the quality that they they came out with that's one of the trickier parts uh the spines i just picked up a really light blue color because i wanted this to have blue spines um the reference picture i ended up using for this was the reactor scene in 84. Uh, the first time you actually see Godzilla show up entirely, he goes and he picks up that reactor and uh, feeds off of it and um, his spines start to do light flickering, a little bit of like white blue and a light blue and a dark blue. So I airbrushed on a watered down mixture of a really light blue acrylic color that I just picked up a sky blue type color. And then, um, I don't think you'll be able to see on the video, but hopefully in the pictures I take later, I went and I took some thinned out purple and blue and really watered that down and then just dabbed that all inside of the recessed points of the spines and just let that sit and dry and left more of a darker bluish purple in all of the lower levels and recesses and in between the cracks and stuff and I think it left a really cool effect of um, it, it looks like the spines are fading out from the center where I avoided airbrushing as that base coat black and then it fades to more of a purple color and then um, slowly out to that 
lighter blue that I airbrushed along the outside. So uh, I did all that along the tail as well. A lot of Bandai's, especially the ones now you don't see, they don't try to paint much onto or at all on the tail. So I figured if I'm going to paint it, I might as well paint the entirety of the spines, even if that's not what lights up a lot of time for Godzilla when he's charging his breath or absorbing anything. You get a lot of just the uh, the main row of the dorsal plates that light up, but I figured, eh, why not? I'll, uh, I'll paint it all. I think it'll look cool. Um, so that was it for the basic stuff. Um, what ended up being a little bit more advanced is I didn't really ever love the sculpt. I hope this is in focus. I have no idea. I didn't love the sculpt of the head for the Bandai 84. Um, it looked good. It looks, I think it looks more accurate than say the NECA or something does. Um, but the way that the open mouth was, it just made his head seem a little, maybe too big. And because of it being a Bandai, they undersized his fangs and other accent pieces of his mouth to uh, get that simple mold for them to, to cast and put in the figure. So what I ended up doing is figured if I'm already painting this guy anyways, what's it matter if I go a little bit farther? So I cut his lower jaw out entirely and um, removed the bottom part and all of the teeth and stuff from, from the inside of it and just left basically the the lip and the jaw and uh, because you can't really see a lot of the times for 84 when he when you have like a, a headshot reference uh, you just see the top row of his teeth and then his his uh, large fangs that that suit had uh, hanging out over over the, the the lower lip and jaw so I figured I could just take all the bottom teeth out and that wouldn't really be an issue it wouldn't look too strange and I don't think it I don't think it does at all so I cut those out and then I painted the inside top of the mouth uh, just with some red and some pinks around the gums and then repainted the teeth that were still visible in the mold. And then I ended up drilling out two small holes in the sides of the upper lip and taking two ends of uh, toothpicks and shaving those down a little bit thinner and uh, gluing those in those holes I drilled out to get more of the the larger overhanging lip fangs that 84 has, and then I made sure that those were painted the same bone, bonish white color that I painted the rest of the teeth. And I think they turned out pretty good, honestly. <laughs> I I was just taking a shot and saying, you know what, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I ruin a, a bootleg figure that has no value in and of itself. And if it works out good, then I think it'll look really cool. And I think it looks pretty cool. I, I have no complaints with how that turned out. Um, I know that adding fangs to Heisei suit figure customs is a pretty common practice. Uh, so there was some references on how to do that pretty efficiently. So I figured I'd give it a shot and I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm thankful that the Bandai mold for the bottom jaw is shaped almost identically like the missing piece of the, the top jaw, so that actually closed up really, really nicely. Uh, that's just glued in place, and there's a little bit of light that you can see through occasionally, but very infrequently. So then there was a big hole left in the uh, the underside of his neck, and I just took some uh, basically like Loctite epoxy mold and filled that gap in and tried to mimic any of the texture from the, the, the neck. Thankfully, the 84 neck is um, relatively smooth in comparison to a lot of the other suits. So uh, I really can't even see the hole that I filled. It's just it's just completely filled. And then I painted over that the same way I painted the rest of the skin. And then the eyes were definitely the trickiest part for me. This is the one reason I never got into trying to do custom painted stuff originally, especially the whole thing, was uh, eyes just scared me. I figured I'd be really bad at it, but with these I just did a white basic uh, full eye and then after that dried I did a brown, a light brown blob and then waited for the dry and then I got a toothpick and kind of just made really small circles and expanded them out with the black for the pupil and then when those were fully dried, I took and sharpened down a, a Q-tip, or a toothpick, sorry. I don't know if I said Q-tip before for the other stuff, but toothpick. 
sharpened that down a ton to make it more of like a needle point, and then just took a little tiny bit of white and added it right on top of the uh, black pupils to make them look uh, like there was a small light reflection in them. And uh, I think they turned out pretty good. They're not, they're not like perfectly like smooth, and I didn't put any gloss or anything over them. I don't know what the proper paint paints are or paint technique is to uh, to do eyes. So if you're watching this and you have any suggestions on what types of paints I should use or what tools I should do to more easily do eyes and get a good result, um, I'd love to know. I'm scared of putting gloss over this because I don't want to reactivate the uh, the acrylic paint and make it run out of the eyes. It shouldn't happen too much because the entirety of this figure I went over with a gloss top coat with my airbrush to uh, prevent any rubbing of the paint from coming off because that was one of the things that kept happening was if I was like setting this down and I accidentally bumped the spines on something it would take the blue paint right off just because it wasn't adhering super well uh, but now that there's a top coat on it it's 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 stayed on pretty good but any suggestions uh, I'd love to hear them now the one thing that's a bit different about this custom that you've probably noticed in this video that I haven't really talked about yet besides being a reference picture is um, a tag and I figured if I was gonna do a custom figure I'd uh, try my hand at making a tag for it um, so I went and pulled that reference photo that I was using for the spines and um, just came up with its own little little series so instead of like a movie monster series figures they have um, at least the older style tags from like the early 2000s do they have mover monster series written along the top of the uh, nameplate so that just says uh, Sims Custom Monster, Monster Series. And then it's Godzilla 84, and then um, it says Reactor Landing version, uh, because that's specifically what I was, the scene that I was going off of. And uh, I pulled the, um, the 2004 50th anniversary tag icons uh, off of another figure. I just took a high res picture of that and then uploaded that. And, um, re-edited it to say uh, 2024 instead because I made this at the beginning of this year and um, they're double-sided printed so on the back it is set up like um, a single a single card is on the more like event style figures instead of the opening card style for the Bandai's and I just have it basically saying you know uh, Godzilla 84 reactor landing version in English and Japanese and then Sims custom monster series again in English and Japanese and then um, I pulled the standard toy uh, stamp and information from that same section in a regular Bandai tag and uh, just put it on there and then um, basically on the last on the bottom part it says essentially along the lines of I don't have the exact verbiage anymore but it's uh, basically just it's a it's an art piece it's not for sale or anything um, you know please don't sue me Bandai so <laughs> just as kind of a joke uh, since you know it's not something I'm selling it shouldn't really be an issue it's a it's a custom it's a one-off custom sure it was from a bootleg but what are the what's Bandai gonna do unmake all the bootlegs they can't really do that unless they buy them all and melt them down themselves so it already exists what's the harm in making it my own and then uh, I guess the very last thing on the bottom that's written out is uh, Original sculpt by Bandai, a movie monster series, um, a little Kamatakun water water bottle picture that says don't freak out. And then um, just the spines from the 84 suit along the bottom. Figured that that would be a good touch. The newer style movie monster series tags obviously have that back cutout piece that's usually in the shape of the back of the monster they're representing more often Godzilla spines than not, even though those are, those are open and fold carts, uh, so they have that actually cut out, but since this is a single, a single stack style part, I just have it printed on there. Um, there's obviously a line on this side. These were uh, the the double-sided printing I did. Unfortunately, didn't match up identically on these ones. I had a good set of prints uh, that had those that line up front and back perfect, um, but I ruined those in the uh, process of preparing these because uh, this isn't just a print and then tagged on here. Um, it's printed on a thick cardstock style photo paper so the front side is really glossy to take the uh to take the image in like a decent resolution um and then they are coated so there is gloss a couple a few layers of gloss spray paint on the front and back just to make sure that this print can't get smudged by fingertips and it also stiffens up the card a little bit it did warp it a tiny bit because i didn't weigh these down 
when I sprayed these, unfortunately, just a consequence. I mean, the new tags are all over the place and messed up straight from the factory, so it's, uh, <laughs> fits right in, if you, if you ask me. But these come out in sheets, which is why there's lines like that. I print a few at a time for some stuff that I plan on making in the future. And um, I'll show you, I guess, kind of what that looks like. I have a, I have a misprint saved in my tag booklet just for future reference. So they come out the printer just in a sheet, six by, by two, uh, two by six, because that's what you fit without running into borders, at least on my printer. And then the the backs are all printed on there as well. And um, this one I printed upside down, so this is a mis misprint, so they're they're off by like an inch on each side. So I had to print the, uh, that technically that tag I had to print three times to get it to come out correctly because I misprinted it once, printed it perfectly the second run, but got it stuck to the, uh, the sheet that I was painting it on, so it ruined the prints, and the third time was close enough, good enough for me. So, interesting process. Um, I doubt I'm the first person to do this to this capacity. I feel like other people probably do this, I just haven't seen any references to it. But if you think it's interesting, let me know. Um, also, if you guys have customs, like custom bandages or something, and you'd be interested in getting tags for them, just feel free to let me know. I'd be uh, more than willing to uh, help you out, work work with you on that, make you some custom tags. Obviously, it'd be it cost a little bit because it's like fifty cents a sheet to print, and then obviously the couple hours it takes me to design, and then the uh, the paint and all that materials and stuff that goes into it. So. If you're interested, if you have customs, you want one with the tag, just let me know. Drop a comment, something, we'll figure it out. I'd be more than willing to do that. I think it'd be fun to help other people out, get some more unique figures. And obviously this has an eye loop tag on it as well. Uh, I just ordered an eye loop tagging gun off Amazon and uh, cut out the, uh, I printed on the print a hole to know where it needed to go and uh, cut that out and sanded that out. And. Uh, just tagged it straight in with a with a eye loop tagging gun in a in a spot that would make sense in between those two top spines there. So a custom figure with a tag. Thought that was pretty cool. So I don't know. I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I plan on doing some other customs. I actually have one painted already. That's my second one painted. Uh, so this one's labeled number one on the tag, just written on there because it was the first one I made. And uh, I need to make a tag for the second one I'm gonna make and then other ones. I have some other figures on order. So. More to come from that, I'll probably show those off if I'm happy with them, but I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. If you guys thought it was interesting, those figures, of, the video's a little bit different than what you're uh, used to from this channel, but, you know, stuff I was doing before was rather boring to me besides just talking about figures. I figured this is something I'm already doing, so I might as well share. Let me know what you guys think. If you have anything that you would like to see, maybe, uh, any figure suggestions a repaint or whatever if I think it's interesting and I'm willing to do it then I'll obviously pick it up or you know leave a comment if you're interested in something like this and maybe we can work something out but um, anything that comes after this is probably just gonna be me going over you know, materials and stuff that I use where I was doing it at so uh, if you're not interested in that and you were just interested in the figure itself then I guess uh, the goodbye here otherwise um, I will see you in a different location where we go over exactly uh, what I used to uh, make the figure and then make the tag. So thanks guys, I'll see you later. All right, so we're down where I uh, do did my painting and stuff for this figure. Um, my makeshift paint booth that I can close up the hide fumes for. Totally safe in an enclosed space. Um, don't do not do this. You, people probably are watching this probably know better than I do. Uh, but it is what it is, I can't go outside. It's zero degrees. Um, but <clears throat> uh, the paint booth, I just set that up, sprayed it inside. Um, this is the uh, the compressor for my airbrush. I have a couple of different airbrushes. They're nothing. They're, they're literally nothing fancy. They're Tarbor Freight Special. One's a gravity feed. One's a siphon feed. Um, but you know, this is this is the paint that I was using for the the spines. Just this Walmart spec acrylic that I watered down or used. Uh, some airbrush reducer with the normal airbrush paints themselves I was using are uh, these from US Art Supply, looks like, yeah. So, spraying with those, uh, this is the cleaner more than anything. Uh, this is the 
Loctite, like epoxy, two-part stuff that I use to fill the neck gap in, uh, you cut it off and it's like a gray section and a blue section. You just squish it together until it's the same color and then you can shape it in place and you get like 20 minutes or so and it's like fully dry in, in a day, but you can paint on it in two hours. Um, but yeah, just normal normal tools for the most part. A bunch of, bunch of paint brushes and stuff and paints. Uh, this is a top coat that I used for this guy, a matte top coat. And then for the most part, besides that, it's like really nothing crazy. Just ruler, scissors, X-Acto knife to cut the vinyl and stuff like that, sandpaper. Really just use really basic stuff. I mean, this is all things I had from other uh, projects that I was had already worked on. The only thing I bought specifically for this was the the two-part sculpty mold stuff. Um, whatever is actually good for doing things like that, please please give me a link if you know, because um, that was, I mean, it's definitely not what that's for and it's a little pricey, but it is what it is. I went out and bought it the same day as this, and then um, I ordered the, ordered the clear coat for it. So I have a lot of these things because I'm used to doing more painting larger stuff for like costumes and things like that. Uh, but not, not anything ever this small. Um, but that's it for, you know, what I used on this guy himself. The, um, the tag on the other hand, right, I'll show in a minute. Um, I made these on Photoshop, just measuring a regular tag and pulling all the dimensions for the, the defined shapes and things. And I would print those off in a sheet like I showed you earlier. And then just uh, basically lay them flat in a box to dust dust proof them just put it in there and then use some generic uh gloss clear rust-oleum you know stuff that you get <laughs> everywhere and then just spray that spray the top layers of it a few times 15 minutes between coats and things and just close that up and let it sit while i did other stuff and then after a day i'd flip it over and do the other side because not waiting long enough is what cost me to ruin my first batch but yeah that's really that's really all the stuff that I used. Um, if you guys have, you know, suggestions for what uh, what would be better for things that I did on this than better materials and stuff, uh, I'd love I'd love to hear thoughts and opinions. But I mean, for the most part, I think it turned out pretty good. But that's it from me. Um, thanks for sticking around and watching the second part. If you did down here in the sketchy loud basement with me, and um, I'll see you guys later.